Good day everyone. Today I will discuss our lesson 3 in financial management which is the time value of money. In this course, the learning objectives are as follows. Explain the concept of future value, present value, annuities, and discount rates. Solve for the future value, present value payment, interest rate, or number of periods using the 5 key approach of financial calculator. Work with the annual, semi-annual, quarterly, monthly, bi-weekly, weekly, or daily periods. Solve for the present value or future value for an uneven cash flow stream. Solve for the interest rate implied by an uneven cash flow stream. Explain, calculate, and compare investment based on the effective, effective annual rate. And perform complex time value of money calculations. The term you should know about the time value of money. Future value is when you put a money in a savings account. You earn a certain return in order to compensate you. Because of this, a dollar today is not worth the same amount as a dollar sometime in the future. Since you earn money on the dollar investment today, you will have more than a dollar at the same later future point. The specific amount that you will have at the future date is referred as a future value. When you say present value, this is the flip side of the future value is a present value. It tells us how much certain amount of money will be worth at some future date assuming a certain rate of return. To compute the present value, present value is equal to future value in a year times 1 plus the rate of return we can earn. When we say annuities, the example previously discussed are four situations for we have a specific amount today and want to know what is worth at the same point in the future. Or when we plan to receive a certain amount at the same point in the future and want to know what is worth today. These are referred as to the lump sum situation because there is only one cash flow that we are discounting or compounding. Perpetuity is an annuity that lasts forever. While it is difficult to imagine a situation where an individual could buy a cash flow stream that will pay a fixed amount per year through infinity, perpetuity is can be useful tools when dealing with long, constant cash flow stream. Consider someone wanting to fund a scholarship or a plan for retirement, where she is not sure how long she live. A perpetuity can provide a reasonable approximation in either of these situations. When we say uneven cash flow stream, Sometimes you will encounter a situation where you have more one payment, but it's not the same year. Remember that annuity requires the payment to be the same year. If you have multiple cash flow, but they are not the same, you have an even cash flow stream. In order to solve a problem like this, treat is a series of a single cash flow or possibly a series of smaller annuities. Non-annual compounding is more frequently interest in compounded. The greater the effective yield on our savings, many banks are non-annual compounding periods, monthly, daily. In order to make comparison, we must find the effective annual yield. This tells us how much we are earning on a ba annual basis. The time value of money is one of the most powerful and most important concept in finance. It essentially is as simple as recognizing that because we can earn a return on our money, the value of money changes depending on when it is received or spent. One dollar today is worth more than one dollar received next year. The value of the dollar initially is referred to a present value while the value of dollar at the later point 
in time is referred to as the future value. Compound interest implies the money will grow over time instead of linearly. This means that relatively small increases in rates of return or time horizon have more power to increase wealth. Present value is your current starting amount. It is the money you have in your hand at the present time. Your initial investment for the future. When we say future value, this is the ending amount of at a point in time in the future. It should be worth more than the present value, provided it is earning interest and growing over time. When we say uh, the number of periods, this is the timeline of your investment or debts. It is usually measured in years, but it could be any scale of time such as quarterly, monthly, or even daily. When we say interest rate, this is the growth rate of the money over the lifetime of the investment. It is stated in the percentage value such as 8% or 0 0.08. And payment amount, these are the series of equal, evenly spaced cash flow. Simple interest is computed on the original amount as the return of the principal for one time period. Example, 1,000 investment for 10 years at 5% simple interest will yield 1,500 by the end of 10 years. When you say compound interest, it is computed on the original amount as the return of the principal plus all unpaid interest accumulate, accumulated to date. Compound interest is always assumed in TVM problems. Example, 1,000 investment for 10 years at 5% interest compounded quarterly four times a year will yield 1,643.62 by the end of 10 years. This is much larger than the simple interest the 1,500 obtained through the simple interest calculation. This is powerful concept that means money can grow depending on how often interest is credited to the account. Once interest is credited, it becomes in effect principal. It is very critical you should understand the compounding frequency of your investment prior to committing your money to it. We have kinds of interest that we will use in computing future and the present value. Fixed interest rate is the straightforward rate that remains constant during the life of the loan or investment. When we say variable interest rate, changes during the life of loan and it's usually tied to the prime rate. It can go up or down depending on the prime rate set for the Federal Reserve. The mixed interest rate are changes from fixed to variable or from variable to fixed. It has something merits depending on its situation, but it is a rate you want to choose for a long investment or debt. The annual percentage range or APR is a border measure of the cost of borrowing money. It is tied to the prime rate and include fees and other charges. In the case of getting a mortgage, a, mortgage, a loan, or a credit card, a APR reflects many aspects, the interest rate, the points, the mortgage broker fees, and other charges that you have to pay to get the loan or some of the facets that are APR reflects. For that reason, APR is usually higher than your interest rate. APR is also known as the published or list listed rate for loan. It is the percentage of a rate interest of a bank or other loan provider charges each year when you borrow any amount of money. This percentage can help you gauge how much you will pay throughout the lifetime of a loan. By law, 
a financial institution are required to show your loans APR. As such, it is important you compare APR's values loans before you make financial borrowing decision. And that's all for today. Thank you.